Okay, so I just want everybody to know that just because I'm wearing a shirt that says, I'm here to party, we're not here to party today. This is a party shirt. But this isn't, this isn't a good topic. This is not a good topic to be talking about. So a lot of you guys probably know by now that I have a pretty big issue with family vlogging channels on YouTube. A lot of the kids content that ends up being on YouTube, like if you guys have been around since last year, you know, you were around for the daddy of five situation or the family of five situation. I've commented on a lot of different channels that I don't like. I tend to try to avoid that space because I always end up finding something that bothers me in it and I always just hope that people are doing a better job but it just it never seems to happen so today we've got a few different topics to talk about and I would like to just say the uh, a lot of this information and a lot of the inspiration towards this and the reminder that this is just the thing that's happening is from Eddie Burback so go check out his channel he's super super funny hilarious guy really good content over there um, but it just tied into something that I ended up seeing on Facebook. You know, I noticed this on my Facebook the other day before I'd had a chance to watch Eddie's video, but it just seemed so perfectly timed that here we are. I was on Facebook. I have some friends that for some reason, even though we all have each other's phone numbers, they only use Facebook Messenger. So therefore I only use Facebook Messenger to talk to them. It's a vicious cycle. So yes, I was on Facebook. And because at some point I liked the Foo Fighters on Facebook because who doesn't like the Foo Fighters? You know, Dave Grohl, cool guy. He was on an episode of Ryan's Mystery Playdate that I didn't even know existed. It's a Nickelodeon show around the YouTuber Ryan's Toy Reviews. And if you guys don't know who Ryan is, Ryan, according to reports, we don't know the exact amount of money made, but he made the most money on YouTube last year. Dude makes bank and he's eight years old. Now in that situation, I always kind of hoped that because he was so big that there were so many eyes on him that they would have to be doing a better job with him in terms of how they get him to work compared to some of these family vlogging channels that either aren't as big or some of the burdens pulled around to different family members. If it's just a vlog, like sometimes it's gonna be on the kids, sometimes it's gonna be on the adults, but this is entirely around him and opening toys. And then toy companies would just start sending him toys and there was a bunch of different brand deals and all that kind of stuff but it's kind of concerning because this kid ends up working constantly there's not a single day that goes by without some kind of content from Ryan and he's eight years old he's eight but yeah for some reason Dave Grohl is on an episode of Ryan's play date which again is the Nickelodeon television show that was given to him if you're rocking and you know it catch a fish oh, oh. If you're rocking and you know it, pop a balloon. Please no, not Dave Grohl. But I get it from like an outside perspective. It's just a kid. He's living life, managed to make it in a big way on YouTube. It's what all kids want. It's the dream. Things start to get a little bit more sinister when you think about the fact that, you know, in traditional media, there's a bunch of laws and rules and regulations for how you can use kids in movies and television shows, how long you can have them working, all sorts of stuff that goes into trying to protect those kids as much as possible none of which exist on YouTube. So like I said, this pretty much went hand in hand with the video that Eddie uploaded that involved Hulu getting YouTube kids programming for whatever reason. So like Ryan's Toys was on Hulu and a bunch of other things were available on Hulu and he was just kind of questioning it. So we're gonna be going over a lot of the information that he covered while talking about a couple of other things and just spreading this information out there a little bit. You should definitely watch his video as well. I'll have it linked down below because he's a little angel. You should subscribe to him too. So Ryan on Hulu, as mentioned by Eddie, does a lot of weird things. So it's basically kind of like a repackaged version of his YouTube show. It adds in a bunch of really cheap animations. At some point it turns him into a superhero, but mostly does a lot of the same stuff that's on his YouTube channel. And it seems cool, like at a shallow level, it's like, oh, that's super cool. That's like every kid's dream. Like what kid doesn't want to be a superhero? But it gets weirder when it's not like, it's not like he's playing a character. He's being himself. He's becoming the franchise. He's becoming the product. And that's really concerning when he's eight years old and has no idea what's happening. So that in itself is bad enough, but it is basically just repackaged versions of what's on his YouTube channel, as well as some like other added in animation stuff that has different voice actors and, and stuff like that. But then there's the Nickelodeon show, as aforementioned, the Ryan's Mystery Playdates, which also has the weird animated characters, but like off to the side, kind of almost like a, like a Mr. Dress Up thing or Mr. Rogers 
Bros type thing, except not as cool. You obviously get Ryan and whoever the mystery play date ends up being. As mentioned one time, it was Dave Grohl recently. You're Dave Grohl. Your daughter can definitely gain access to better content. Like bless you for being super involved in your daughter's life, but I don't, why? Why? Another time it was Tony Hawk and one of them was like this guy that I don't understand why some people think that like interacting with kids means you have to be like big eyed like, Oh, that's interesting, little boy. Like, why do you, why do you have to do the thing with your eyes? It's like, it's unnecessary. It's weird. It's weird. Again, I don't think anybody has malicious intent when they're being involved in this stuff. It's just when you know what happens behind the scenes in a lot of these situations. And when you have YouTuber after YouTuber talking about burnout and issues of stress and things not going right, like eventually that's going to catch up with him. Eventually his parents are going to run into a situation where things are kind of iffy, or maybe Ryan decides he doesn't want to work anymore, and maybe they didn't save the money properly. Like, it starts getting concerning when your eight-year-old child becomes your main source of income. So yeah, the weird characters from the Hulu show, Ryan, the play date, and his parents. Oh, like this. I hate, I hate this. I hate all of it. So that's always where my main issue has been with a lot of these kid channels is that there's just no labor laws or any kind of regulation in place to protect them the same way there are with traditional actors who still end up messed up a lot of the times. So this is pretty scary. And I just found out that apparently they he has sisters, there's twins. When do they have time to take care of other children? Who is taking care of the twins? So yeah, like I mentioned, the YouTube channels themselves are bad enough. But now they're being built into these massive franchises where they have Nickelodeon shows and Hulu spots. And I've got to wonder, how is this happening? How are they being marketed in a way that this is happening? Because it's not just Ryan, we'll get to that in a second. But Eddie was kind enough to answer that for us. And it's pretty obvious when you look at, uh, you know, the Hulu show, it's Pocket Watch Ryan Toys Review Ultimate Mishmash. That kind of lets you know, like, what the frick is Pocket Watch? So Eddie ended up looking into the company Pocket Watch and found out that they're essentially run by people who came from Machinima, Maker Studios, and Defy Media, who you may all remember as names of very prominent YouTube, you know, multi-channel networks or just media conglomerate groups that absolutely screwed over everybody in their wake. I think there's still people trying to fight Defy Media for money. Maker Studios screwed over so many different people. And I know so many people in the gaming community that were affected by Machinima. Machinima. So we're already off to a bad start because we have these people who are totally willing to screw over adults for their hard-earned money now in charge of something that runs a children's army because they literally exist to build franchises out of YouTube channels. That is actually their mission statement. As mentioned, YouTube already struggles with regulations and this company doesn't seem like they're trying to help these people make the best of their own brands. It seems like they're trying to take advantage of a loophole in the system because eventually it It'll get patched up, but they'll be making off like bandits by the time Ryan needs therapy. I'm sorry, I'm hoping that Ryan ends up fine. We're root we're all rooting for you. And it's not just Ryan, because Pocket Watch actually has five main channels under their brand, and only one of them is an adult. They have Captain Sparkles, and that's the only person that they represent that's an adult. And I get it, most kids want to be YouTubers. It's not an uncommon thing. It's like this generation's rock star or actor. Kids look up to YouTubers because that's what they're being exposed to the most, but it still comes down to the parent to say, no, I will not let you exploit my child. <laughs> Cause there's a huge difference between, oh, mom and dad, I just wanna make some videos talking about my Pokemon cards and you know, turning that eight year old into a franchise. So like I said, there's obviously a genuine concern for the kids that are actually involved, the kids that are actually making the content, but like, what about the kids watching? So for one, I don't even wanna look into this, but I am sure there are so many parents who saw their kids watching this and thought, hey, my kid's way more entertaining than Ryan. I'm just gonna start buying him or her a bunch of toys. I'm gonna sit in front of a camera and I'm gonna make this happen. And then maybe getting really frustrated when it doesn't pan out. That is just one immediate downside I can think of. Also, just the fact that this is daily episodes of a kid opening new toys, playing with things, it really just lends into the fact that kids will never be satisfied with what they already have. They're always gonna want that next thing because Ryan's Toys Review essentially just ends up being a non-stop advertisement. Most of the videos are advertised now. They are actually 
sponsored by companies and they get sent things for free to talk about in the videos. So they do end up being largely advertisements, which did get them in trouble, which we'll get to in a second. But those are just some of the immediate concerns that I can think of. Because that's always been a very interesting thing about YouTube in terms of like what you have to disclose in ads, how many things you're allowed to put in a video that count as an ad. And if you guys remember the Nerd City video that came out a while ago, he specifically detailed a bunch of these advertisement laws in his Jake Paul video, just talking about how the fact that most of Jake Paul's videos end up being advertisements for his extremely young audience, which technically means that he should also be getting a non on his door by the FTC. But in that video, he talked about a lot of the situations that led into these regulations and guidelines being placed on children's advertisements. And this is largely because back in the 70s, a lot of kids shows were specifically made around toys. So you'd come up with a toy and then you'd develop a television show around that toy so that you could sell the toy. This was huge with Transformers specifically, but it was also very notable in things like He-Man, G.I. Joe, and, and the list just goes on. So that ended up leading to a bunch of laws that said that, you know, you couldn't advertise, you know, Transformers during an episode of Transformers. You can't advertise Pokemon cards during an episode of Pokemon because it's been established that children literally can't understand and advertisements the same way as adults do, and the younger they are, the worse it is. The American Psychological Association specifically says that children under the age of eight can't understand advertisements the same way as adults can, and they can't discern fantasy from realities. And because of that, they're extremely susceptible to different types of advertisement, and they'd be more likely to believe misleading statements that would be in an advertisement. And that's why some of the stuff that goes down on YouTube, and now apparently Hulu shows, is just ridiculous to me. Especially when you take into consideration the fact that these shows and YouTube channels are watched by very young kids. Like, Ryan's eight, but he's got viewers that are probably as young as two, three, four years old. And the FTC would agree because Ryan's Toy Review just got hit with a massive complaint in regards to how Ryan's parents implement the ads into the show. So they specifically said that the parents have been deceiving millions of young children on a daily basis by taking these ad deals but not disclosing them properly. It also specified instances where parents didn't actually say that something was an advertisement for certain companies like Chuck E. Cheese and Hardee's. The channel's also been used to promote games gambling loot box type sites and a bunch of other stuff that is constantly being talked down upon on the YouTube sphere. And then of course, specifically mentioning the fact that the difference between organic content and sponsored content doesn't mean anything to a preschooler. They can't tell the difference between something that's real and that's something that's sponsored, obviously. And Ryan isn't the only one. There's another channel called Hobby Kids TVs that actually have an animated series called Hobby Kids Adventures, which literally has an entire episode dedicated to Carl's Jr. Carl's Jr. <laughs> I'm gonna order a cheeseburger, fries, and a yummy milk. Just saying, this episode is brought to you by Carl's Jr., or the following is an ad by Carl's Jr. on a show that's gonna be watched by five-year-olds. They don't understand what that means. So then when the following entire rest of the episode is completely centered around Carl's Jr. That's messed up. That's so messed up. But it's not confusing because Hardee's and Carl's Jr., which are the same company, have a major sponsorship deal with Pocket Watch as a company. Like, even McDonald's has more integrity than this, presumably. Is McDonald's doing this somewhere? Please let me know. You know, there's already an obesity epidemic in children in the United States, and, and the last thing you want to be doing is encouraging them to, like, eat Carl's Jr. and basically saying that Carl's Jr. is the best possible food they could possibly have. No one makes charbroiled burgers as good as Carl's Jr. This is so gross! How is this okay? And what makes this show even worse is that it was specifically produced by Butch Hartman, who you guys might remember as the creator of Danny Phantom and The Fairly Odd Parents, very popular television shows back in the day. But at some point last year, he was making this entire thing called Oaxis because he was genuinely concerned about the content that kids were consuming, and he wanted family-friendlier, educational, better kids programming out there that he felt was lacking from today's society. So you were concerned about what children were being exposed to in society, so you decided to make an animated version of a live action family, and then have that show put in a bunch of disingenuous advertisements for something like Carl's Jr., and then think that's better television than what might have been in the past. Like, Power Rangers was more educational than this. And you know, us YouTubers aren't the only ones that have a problem with some of this content. Like, I, I went to Common Sense Media, Dot org to look up some reviews on Ryan's mystery playdate 
And for the most part, they're really bad. From parents, it has an overall rating of one star. From kids, it has a two star. The expert review seems to give it a three out of five, but when parents give it a one star, come on. So one from April of this year, horrible. I started letting my son watch Ryan's toy review and everything seemed good at first. After a few episodes, I realized that parents are using their child for their own benefit. It's not technically a toy review. It almost feels like they purchase their child all of the toys and host on YouTube to show them off or rub it in other families' faces. I stopped letting my son watch his videos when they videotaped a family vacation and my son begged me to take him to Disney World and I had to explain to him that I could not take him because we didn't have the money that Ryan has. After that, he asked me, why does Ryan get all of these toys and he can't? And his mother and father are annoying and seem fake. Spoiled kid who shouldn't be on TV. I didn't allow the children to watch Ryan on YouTube. Now I have to figure out how to block him on the Nick Jr. app still haven't found a way, and on the TV. He's popular for his toy reviews and his personality. He's an overindulged child that his parents are using to support their family, and also his mother is very loud and annoying. I won't attack Ryan. He's a kid. He's an eight-year-old. Of course he's gonna come across that way. They're just shoving stuff at him. Children do not need the influence of this child slash his family with their more, newer, better. We need to teach kids to appreciate what they have, use their imagination, play outside, and how to enjoy life without a constant barrage of material possessions. That's the truth. Terrible! I also created an account to give my opinion on the ridiculous show. There is nothing remotely entertaining or educational about this show. The child and his parents are horrible actors. The show does not warrant a time slot on Nickelodeon. Since we have to pay for this garbage, this needs to be taken off the air immediately. I guess, I guess if I was paying for Nickelodeon and I couldn't stop my kid, I feel like this, is this gen this generation's Caillou? Except Caillou's a cartoon character that no one actually has a face to. I get, Ryan is not Caillou, but is this like that? Do parents feel the way about Ryan's channel as my parents did with Caillou? And then this kind of, you know, lends into what I assumed would start happening as like a bad side effect of these channels is other parents thinking that their kids deserve this chance. So I think they should invite kids slash fans to show. I am very happy for Ryan and his family to be given the opportunity to have a network TV show. My kids are fans of Ryan and his family. In fact, a lot of kids love Ryan. Kids would love the chance to meet Ryan and to go hang out with him. With that being said, it would be nice for the show to invite his fans to participate and do obstacle courses and games. Maybe even win toys. That would be a true play date. Sounds like somebody wants to get involved and mooch up to this family and be the new Ryan toys. Cause maybe, maybe Ryan needs a female sidekick. Who knows? That's what I would be worried about. So yeah, clearly the parents have issues with this too. And I know I mentioned Butch Hartman and we mentioned, you know, Dave Grohl being on the show. We had Tony Hawk on the show, but there are some major investments in this. And this was one of the ones that shocked me the most when it was revealed by Eddie Downey Ventures, as in Robert Downey Jr. was one of the main key investors in this platform, in Pocket Watch. So specifically in a platform that is seeking to take child YouTubers and turning them into global franchises. Do you know where your money's going to, Mr. Mr. Downey? Do you know? Do you know that your money is going to basically continuing the exploitation of an eight-year-old? And like, I get it, even if he says he wants to do it. He's eight. That's why there's labor laws for actual actors because they would just keep going. I'm kidding. Come, come here. Come here. Child labor laws. I think my favorite part about that spot where they announce like the meet our backers, the top is called, you could call us backers or investors, but we prefer you think of us as believers. Yikes. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's video. I just kind of wanted to shed some additional light on this situation because the whole thing's very weird and gross and messed up to me. Again, check out Eddie's video. He definitely went over a lot more of the details when it comes to Pocket Watch. I just kind of wanted to talk way more about the advertising side of it and like the effects on children in general. You guys know that I have issues with children being on YouTube and how they're implemented on YouTube. And I don't know if there's necessarily a safe way to do it, especially when the channels start growing but this isn't it. So as always, I hope you all are having a fantastic day. Let me know what you guys are thinking in the comment section down below. Make sure to check out Eddie's video and we'll catch you next time.